I'm going to show you 10 proven ways to use ChatGPT for SEO without spamming or doing anything risky. And these techniques will save you a massive amount of time and effort in your SEO campaigns. My name is Nathan Gotch and I've led hundreds of successful SEO campaigns over the last decade and I'm the CEO of Rankability, a top AI SEO software company. And let's start with number one, which is filter through a huge list of keywords based on relevance. So start by going into a keyword research tool. So in this case, I'm just going to use Rankability and go ahead and download the keyword list that you're trying to filter through. So in this case, I'll just copy them and then we're gonna go over to ChatGPT. And what I'm gonna do is use this very simple prompt. And I'll have all of these prompts below the video, but for now, just let me walk you through this real quickly. So essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to take this huge list of, let's say 400 keywords and narrow it down into the most relevant keywords to pursue. And this is kind of just stage one of filtering through keywords, but it's the most important because we want to see how close is this keyword to actually making us money in this business. Okay. And the shorter that gap is, the better it's going to be. The more, the longer that gap is, the further away someone is to actually making a buying decision, the worse that keyword is going to be and the lower priority that it should be. So in this case, you can see here, you're going to see what the company sales sells. So in this case is bankruptcy lawyer in Atlanta. And then we're going to go ahead and just paste in those keywords. Okay. So it thought for about two minutes and 40 seconds, and you can see it took that huge huge list of keywords and assign that relevant score. ChatGPT SEO technique number two is to group your keywords by clusters. So now you have your keyword relevance. Now what you want to do is take all of these keywords and only look at the keywords that have good relevance and then put them into, into buckets and clusters. Because basically when you do SEO, you really want to focus on one cluster at a time. You don't want to just be spreading yourself across a bunch of different irrelevant topics. You want to focus in on one cluster, go a mile deep on that cluster, and then move on to the next one. This is how you're going to build really good performance. So you can see here, what I said is just create categories clusters for this keyword set. And then basically what we're doing is having it put it into a table. So now you can see it's going to go ahead and build this for us and it's going to put it all into the appropriate categories and clusters, putting each of these topics into the right buckets. And then we're going to attack that bucket with all of our focus and all of our effort. When we finish one bucket, we're going to move on to the next bucket. And then these will all, these clusters will all link to each other. And this is how you build real topic authority on your website. And then what you want to do is after you've attacked all these topics on your website, then you want to take these same exact topics and attack them on YouTube and LinkedIn and every other place you're creating content. And now for ChatGBT SEO technique number three, which is to create new content that ranks. So the first you want to do is go into chat GBT and what you're going to have chat GBT do is a couple of things. Number one, and this is under the assumption that we're creating a commercial page on the local level, but this would apply to any commercial page in any industry. Okay. So this case we're going to do HVAC and what we're going to do is we're going to have it crawl a specific website here. So this is going to be the website that we're going to be creating a commercial page on. And you can see crawl this HVAC business. You put in the root domain like this and then extract their unique selling propositions, testimonials, and turn it into a prompt for Rankability's AI writer context window. And then you put the primary keyword in there and then say what, what the intent of the, of the page is. Okay. So in this case, it's going to be commercial intent. Now here's the most important part. Make sure that you use the thinking model in chat GPT. Okay. So you you can see here, I have selected the thinking model and I didn't do extended thinking. I just did the standard thinking for this one. That's all you really need. And the reason this is really critical, because if you don't do this, it's, it may not be as accurate. So what you'll see here, if you click on thought for 20 seconds, you can see that it actually went and crawled this website. And this is really critical. We need to have it go and retrieve this information. So what we're doing here is instead of just creating generic AI content, what we're doing is we're, we're adding context that makes this content really unique to this business. Okay. And that's really important when you're building commercial page, it should be relevant to your business because you're trying to persuade someone to become a lead or a customer. Okay. So that is the idea. So we want to have that context. You don't just want to create generic content. We're going to go in here. We're going to create a new piece of content. We're going to go ahead and click, uh, use AI generated content. Go ahead and run this through. This will be a service page. And then we go in and grab, uh, go ahead and grab this critical information about this business. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and copy this and we're going to put this into the context window. All right. So the article is ready. We'll go ahead and just click through 
and we should see that it is already optimized and ready for the editorial process. Chat GBT SEO method number four is to optimize existing content. So the easiest way to optimize existing pages is to simply just go into the content optimizer, do import URL content inside of Rankability, enter the keyword phrase, and then enter the URL that you want to optimize or improve, and then just run that optimizer. Okay, so now the report is done. So we'll go ahead and just click through, and we're gonna be able to immediately see the gaps that this page has. And that's really what we want to see is like, you know, before I showed you a, a page that's optimized very well that we built from scratch, we want to get to this point with any existing page that we have. So we can see here, we've got tons of opportunities to attack some of these topics and ultimately make this page more relevant. Now, funny enough, this page is, you know, 1800 words, but it's just not relevant, right? So the words don't make the page perform well. The relevance makes the page perform well in search. Okay. That's what matters. So let's go ahead and grab this content and we're actually going to take this content and we're going to copy it over and we're going to put it into chat GPT. Okay. So we're going to revise this copy and we're going to put this in here like this. And then we'll also say, and cover all the critical related topics. Okay. So we're going to go back in here. We can actually just sort this by relevance. We're going to copy this and then we'll go ahead and just paste this into chat GPT. Okay. So as you can see, this took about 10 seconds for chat GPT to do this. So we copy this and now we're going to go ahead and see if it made a big improvement. So we're at about a 21, the original asset. We're going to go over here. We're going to paste in this version and it got to a 36. Okay. So didn't quite cover all the topics that it needed to. So that means all we have to do now is we're going to go back over here and go to unused. Okay. And we're just going to copy these. And when you copy these over, it's only going to copy over the unused keywords. We're going to go back to chat GPT and we're going to say revise to make sure you cover all of these critical topics. We actually don't have to say all, we can say cover most of these critical topics. Okay. We'll give it some freedom to choose what it should cover. Okay. So it took about 12 seconds to revise that copy. So let's see how much better this performs now, uh, as far as relevant. So we got it up to a 36 originally, uh, for, as in, in our first draft, we'll see how the second draft of this performs and we got up to a 60. Okay. So now we're really in a spot where, you know, you could theoretically do another run and like you know, try to go to the next level with this. But honestly, you, you probably could be fine with just at a 60, right? I mean, I, I do typically recommend at least hitting the optimal, but in this scenario, we basically took it from, I think about a 20 something up to a 60. That means we've, we've, uh, more than doubled. Actually, we've tripled the relevance of this page. Okay. So I would think in this case, this would be uh, enough relevance to launch and see how it performs. And if it still needs a little bit more, then you can take it to you know another level. So right here, I'd be pretty satisfied with this. And then now I just focus on making sure that this page is very high quality. It's designed well. It's got that nice commercial structure so it can actually drive conversions and then it should be good to go. And now for number five, which is to create schema markup. So at this point, it's no secret that ChatGPT can create schema markup for you. Now, the initial schema that you get is usually got some, it's pretty templated, it's, it needs some work, okay? So you'll see here, as I go through this process, iterating on this schema. So what I did here is I said, add all reviews from G2 and Captera. So you can see here over in the activity, it actually went through and crawled all of these reviews, okay? Crawled them all and then updated this schema and now it's got really you know very rich schema that we can add to the page itself so I just go into replit and then I'm just gonna paste this in replit will go update this review page schema okay so finish the schema markup and we can see here we'll go ahead and refresh this and we'll see if we go to the builder we'll see that it I had to adjust it to the product schema but you can see here it's got all the schema markup in here and it's good to go. So this just makes this page more rich, specifically for traditional search engines. There's not a whole lot of evidence that AI platforms use this as of right now, but we do know that traditional search engines do likely use schema markup. Moving on to number six, which is to create data-driven content. Number one, make sure you pick the right model. So for this one, I did the thinking model and I did extended thinking for this, okay? So the most extreme thinking you can use other than the research grade one, okay? So what you can see here is I just said research this topic and share your findings. Okay. That's how you want to start with this. Now you can see, you know, 
yes, you could do this yourself. You could manually research this topic. But the advantage here is that when we click on the reasoning process, you can see what it goes through and ultimately how many sources it digs through. So it's essentially doing what we used to do by opening up, you know, a hundred tabs and filtering through the information, trying to find the answer. Uh, it's doing it in two minutes. Okay. Or give or take two or three minutes. Uh, so analyzing, uh, all of these sources, hundreds of sources in about three minutes and synthesizing that information for you. I mean, it's pretty crazy. So what we can see here though is, all right, we've got the, we've got the information. Now what we can do is we can actually take this information and, and convert it into an article, but this is where we take it to the next level. Okay. So instead of just taking this and just like, you know, creating an article like this directly from this, layer on rankability as well. So that way you've got this unique curated data also with the really good relevance. So you can see what I did here is I go ahead and just copy over. So I did is dwell time a Google ranking factor, copy over these topics, and then we're going to go back in here and you'll see, I'm going to say, write an article explaining your findings, mention the source and make sure you cover these critical topics. Okay. So it's going to cover these topics. Um, and notice I don't give it a word count target. I don't usually give it word count targets anymore. I just let it go where it wants to go because I give it the topics to run with and then let the AI determine how much depth you should go into each kind of area. Okay. And sometimes you obviously have to make adjustments, but at least initially let it just do its thing. Okay. And you can see here already it built out an asset pretty quickly. Okay. But it's, it's missing a title. It's, it needs a little bit of work. So I had to do a quick revision. Um, you can see here now we've got the actual title in here. So we'll go in and just paste this title into rankability. And now we've got, uh, you know, we're already ranked. We've got the most important topic already in here. So obviously the score goes up a lot because having it in the title, we've personally, we've made it that way so that you get more points if it's in the actual title because it's really critical. Okay. So short answer, you can see here. So we'll go ahead and paste this over, just copy this, uh, what it built, and we'll see how this draft did. Uh, and we'll take a look. So uh, on the first try, already highly, highly relevant. And so for us from here, basically all we would do is we take this content and then we would turn it into something, uh, you know, much more digestible and readable, uh, show images, obviously have all of our citations. Um, and then we've already basically done all the heavy lifting of this work. And now for number seven, which is to generate link bait ideas. So I'll have this prompt below the video, but basically what you can do is I create a little syntax. Uh, I built this uh, quite some time ago. And basically what it's going to do is you could take this little syntax and just update this section here, which is the type of business that you're trying to create link bait for. And then the location, if, if it's local, assuming it's local. And then you're going to run this through. And once again, use the thinking model because it tends to be a little bit better. And then we can go and look at all the different types of link bait that it's going to build. The reason why we're using this syntax here is because these are all ideas that are proven to be linkable. Okay. Very proven linkability, either based on emotion or based on the, a particular content framework. So this is just a really quick way to just get tons of good ideas that then you, you can run with. And then you can keep expanding on these ideas, right? You look at some of these and just go deeper and deeper into these ideas. Moving on to number eight, which is to create free tools. And what I did is I forced ChatGPT to go and research the proper structure and guide, guidelines for this specific standard. And then I actually having it build the tool itself. So you can see here in about one minute and 22 seconds or one minute and 26 seconds, man, it's a, sometimes it blows my mind how quickly it does stuff like this, but you can see here, you know, it, it built out the HTML. Uh, it even built out the CSS and the JavaScript, everything. It's good to go completely. So all I have to do is go over here and look at preview and you can see, uh, it's already built this little basic tool. Okay. Like no problem at all. So, and this is like a minute and 20, you know, a minute of work. So obviously you're going to work with this, improve it, test it, make sure it works and then, and then deploy it on the website. But once again, just showing how quickly we can create link bait is, is just, it's never been this easy. And now for chat GBT SEO technique number nine, which is turning it into your full time link builder. So I've showed already many times on my channel, how you can use agents to go and do link prospecting for you. And so at this point, once again, there's just no good reason for you to be going into Google and just opening up a bunch of link prospects when the agent can do this for you. And in fact, the agent right now, I've got a little post-it note here.
here. Um, the agent on the pro mode, you can do up to 40 agent requests a month, 40 requests. So that means you could do 40 prospecting campaigns every single month. So think about it. You could basically tap out an entire industry in one month if you maximize all of your credits with the agent mode inside of ChatGPT. So maximize this stuff. What I did here is I'll have this prompt below the video, but basically I'm looking for listicles. But this is, gives you the nice list of prospects to work with. And you can actually have the agent go and find the emails or contact information as well. And moving on to number 10, which is to track your ChatGPT SEO performance. So I actually have a brand new training dedicated to AI search analytics and tracking. But just real quick, I'll give you a real quick kind of 101 tutorial here, which which is go and create this, use this very simple prompt to create 10 synthetic prompts and use a seed like I'm using. So Plumber, Chesterfield, Missouri. And then what you'll do is you have ChatGPT create these synthetic prompts for you. Okay, so then just grab one of these prompts. And then what you wanna do next is go and create a dedicated testing account inside of ChatGPT. So we have a dedicated email that we use for the testing. Go in here and then you can see we're gonna put this prompt in and this is, uh, you know, this is actually spelled wrong, but the top 10 best plumbers in Chesterfield, Missouri, uh, for emergency leaks right now. So it's important to mention right now because it's going to force ChatGPT to use retrieval and we need it to use retrieval to get the most current information. So by saying right now or 2025 or, you know, you get really specific, but you want to force it to use retrieval. And then from here, what you're doing is seeing is our brand actually appearing in this generated response? So it's a, it's a, it's a binary kind of question. It's a one or a zero. So one, yes, zero, no. Okay, that's the first part. Then the second part is what position are we in? So if we are here, where are we showing up on this list? And this is similar to you know what we're used to with SEO, which is like the top ranking results get all you know get all the visibility. So you want to be recommended higher on this list because. Uh, you know, most people are not going to remember you if you're somewhere in the middle, even at the end. Okay. So there's ways to push this up more, but the point is just to establish benchmarks. Those two things are the most important. Like number one, are we mentioned? Number two, what's our position? Then what you want to do is you want to use all of those synthetic prompts and you want to run these across, uh, run all of these that all have different intent and then get a kind of a cumulative idea of your overall brand visibility across chat GPT. Okay. That's what you want to do. You need to have a lot of coverage. If you just do one, that's not going to give you a lot of information. You want to see ultimately how visible you are across all of these prompts and then ultimately what your position is across all these prompts. And that will give you a really nice idea uh, and ultimately a good place to begin working from to improve your visibility. So that's just a taste of what's possible. If you want more chat GPT SEO systems, apply for Rankability Academy and watch the next video to learn how to get chat GPT to recommend your business or your client's business.